Hello, I'm Captain Gamer, and let's play Final Fantasy VII, the Command Materia Challenge. And welcome to Disc 3 of Final Fantasy VII. As you can see, it starts off directly where Disc 2 left off, charging into the Northern Crater for the final showdown against Sephiroth. Take care, the man says casually, as we are allegedly going to go down this ladder. However... We, I believe Sephiroth can wait, because we have some unfinished business elsewhere in the world. Glad sign this. What is it? It's a contract that says when the war is over, all the materia will belong to me. It's all in there. Read it carefully and then sign it, alright? Forget it. I'm not even gonna read it. Wow, Yuffie's actually trying to do a little bit more of a lawful evil sort of thing with the materia and all that stuff. Whenever I read, I get airsick. Oh yeah? I'm the same way, so I can't say too much. Damn, my plan failed. Let's pick on Nanaki later to have steam. But what's, what's wrong with Nanaki? Oh, uh, you, you silly little kid ninja master, you. But I ain't gonna forget, no matter what happens. Not about this here trip, or well, them folks. None of it. Your Kansai dialect is really coming out there, Kate. Sorry, I'm in the middle of a very delicate operation. Are you also? Oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh, he actually, uh, how did you almost accidentally crash the ship when we're down here. Or maybe the creeper exploded in your house so much it actually shook the ship. Cloud, take the ship to the northern cave. The time for flying is now past. Our battlefield is now beneath the earth. The gate to tomorrow is not the light of heaven, but the darkness of the depths of the earth. Oh well, I told you we can get to that, but we got more stuff to take care of first. I am Nanaki, son of Seto. I am afraid of nothing, except spiders. It's all right, all right. I'm Nanaki, son of Brave Seto. I am not afraid of Sephiroth. Yeah, the more you repeat that, the less convincing it is. <laughs> Time's gonna waste sneaking up on you, huh? I'm shaking all over. <laughs> I feel sick. Actually, Barrett, Barrett kind of comes off as cowardly, but. Come on! This is the fate of the world! Hey, Cloud, would you tell me it's alright? Um... Okay, so she didn't really want it said any particular way, so say it normal. Not. It's alright. You're right. Things will be alright. Yeah. Sometimes we know the truth in our head, but we just need someone else to say it, so... You know, it doesn't sound like it's something in our head. We can be kind of hypercritical of things that we say ourselves. You ever see the play Loveless? Um, honestly, no. Yeah, figured someone like you wouldn't be much on plays. A and you are, Sid? Can I uh, lie and say yes? Yeah? Really? Well, that's fine. They've been doing that play or summer since I was a kid. And I remember seeing it just once. That was when I was in Midgar, interviewing to be a pilot. I had some free time and thought I'd catch the play. Now, I'm no big fan of the theater or anything. But this thing put me to sleep, just like I thought it would. Finally, during the last scene, the guy next to me woke me up, telling me my snoring was too loud. So about all I really remember of the play is the end. The sister of the lead asked her lover, do you really have to leave? And the guy says, Gesture, gesture, I promised. The people I love are waiting. That was actually an interesting comma placement to indicate a pause rather than the separation of the phrases and clauses or whatever in the sentence. I'm an English major, I should know this. I don't understand, not at all, but please take care of yourself. 
Of course, I'll come back to you. Even if you don't promise to wait, I'll return knowing that you'll be here. I remember thinking when I heard those lines... Cuss. What the hell are you talking about? But, you know, now I'm not so sure. I think I understand. Okay, then. I guess there's something about approaching the end of the world that makes you remember all the things, the little minute details that happen in your life. So, let us take a look at the new high wind. As you can see, there are no longer propellers on the end. Now we've got jet propulsion. Oh my goodness, that that, that is really cool. Look at these, these just blue flames propelling us forward. Okay, so anyways... Uh, at this point, Disc 3 has little uh, storyline content. The only thing, the only storyline contained within Disc 3 of Final Fantasy 7 is going to the North Crater, diving in, and going in for the final showdown, the final dungeon type place, and then what comes after. However, all that aside, essentially this becomes an open world game where everything is available to you, and anything that isn't available to you can become available available to you with a little bit of work. So, what we are going to visit right now is this place, the Bone Village. And there is a very important item that we have to get in order to do everything else. Lunar Harp is somewhere in the ground here. We can start excavating it for you if you want us to. Uh, excuse me, but... Lunar Harp's right here. You guys are literally wasting your time. But, you know... I, I'm not going to put them through that. What we have to do now is... We are going to start digging. And we are going to look for good treasure. Then I'll lend you some of my staff. Show us where you want us to dig. Very well, then. Please push the square button to set our staff in position. Now then, we are looking for something very specific. It was actually something that I was looking for in a previous episode, and then I didn't realize that it was too soon to be looking for this thing. If Cloud would get up the ladder... I am not entirely sure what you want. Oh, right! The, uh, the controls actually revert to the default controls. So, where I use X as my OK button, uh, the circle button is OK over here. So, Cloud! Okay, so, put the staff in position. Let us just get staff people over here, order a search over this way, and since we have just so much gill coming our way, that we can just order as much search as I want. So, this, this sort of area right here is the general area, and the funny thing is I can actually use the... the X button to confirm that where I want my search. Jeez, my wheeze. Okay, and then we can order one last search just for symmetry. If we're going for symmetry from left to right instead of up to down. But we're symmetrical out of the way now. Not entirely symmetrical, but I have no idea what I'm talking about anymore. Okay, I am done with ordering searches. And then we will press the scroll button to ignite the bombs in the search! Kaboom! Each staff member will calculate the tremors and face the buried item. In other words, the point where the staff's line of vision meets is the dig point. And all the staff face that way. Select the dig point by moving to the point and pressing the square button. The dig staff will search for the item. I am just going... I am going to disregard where they're pointing and... Press the square button. And it seems like they do not want me to establish anywhere in this area. Don't know why that is. Oh, I had to 
X out of that message in order to get to that point. Now the staff will dig here, the results of the dig will be placed in the town treasure box overnight. And there's the guy searching around for the thing. I probably messed this up something fierce, I don't know what that guy's supposed to be doing. But let's see what we got. We have nothing in here. Son of a... Okay, this time I'm going to try searching in the actual place where all of the diggers are facing. This is very dependent on random chance. I mean, I select good treasure or normal treasure, and it just picks one item for me to grab. So the thing I'm looking for probably doesn't even have a chance of popping up. I only have a chance of having a chance of finding it. So, these two people are looking in this general direction, so I'm gonna plant the thing here. And we are going to see if I actually come up with anything this time. I would like to come up with something this time. And we've got a bunt line. The bunt line is a weapon for Vincent. It is a long-ranged weapon, naturally. You know, with the meager PlayStation graphics, I, c I just can't tell where this person is facing right here. But we can just determine that... Er, so, I, I am literally pointing with my finger. This guy's facing down this way. This person is facing down this way. So I am guessing that the treasure to find is over here. Yes. Let us go down into the trenches one more time. To find that we have uncovered nothing in here. Okay. This person is facing... No, way, he's facing directly down. I thought he was looking up! I got a mop. Seriously, who buried a mop around here? <sighs> okay, so the mop is a weapon for Sid. And it is completely useless. I'm guessing that was Sid's equivalent of all those Temple of the Ancients weapons that had high attack power but no materia slots. But that's not what I'm looking for! Proceed Megalixir. You all suck. Received key item, key to Sector 5. I'll look this up on a video. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Other than this is the very first time in the history of ever I've actually dug up the key to Sector 5. I'm done with this place. How about you? Let's just let, let's let's. I'm cool. I'm loosey goosey. It's all good. Now the key to sector five, quite literally, is the key to sector five. Quite literally, is the key to sector five, which is one of the subsections of Midgar, right over here. What do you have to say? That's funny. Did I drop the key to this gate somewhere? Was it when I was on that excavation tour? That's some good, uh, explanatory text telling me where to find it. But, booyah! I'm not even gonna let you in. Ah, uh, I'm running around on the outside here. Woo! Probably could run to either extremity, but I am on a mission. And, uh, look at where we end up. What the? That kid teleported. Okay, and one of the kids disappeared. Here, pretty. Hey, where's the flower lady? Um, she is everywhere at once. Let's just say, yeah. Ugh. Remember when I was running through here and everything was a moderate threat? Yeah, that was kind of funny. Anyway. We are on our way back to Wall Market, a place where interesting things happened. But anyway, we're on our way to Wall Market to pick up a very special item for a very special person. 
we shall see what happens when we get there. Here is the playground of nice, of serene moments. Different sorts of serenity, and yeah, that's, that's still there, looking like that. No random encounters, thank you very much. And we are now in Walmart, and we don't even need to go that far. We go into this item shop. Herp -do. We will go ahead and look at the machine. Just not even push any buttons. Right there, the premium heart. The premium heart is a weapon for Tifa. It is her ultimate weapon. And yes, I have done some research on the way ultimate weapons work. This one actually powers up to a certain maximum every single time you get a miss on Tifa's Limit Breaks. So if you go out and you start grinding up misses on Tifa's Limit Breaks, then you can make this pretty powerful. On that note, Vincent's Death Penalty also powers up depending on how many enemies the Death Penalty has finished off. So it's going to start out weak, and then become stronger. And... I'm sorry if I'm a little on edge, but... That Bone Village... That Bone Village... Ultimate Weapons are going to be the theme of this episode, because... Um... Uh, you could collect... Right before you raid Midgar, that's like the breaking point, the point of no return between Disc 2 and Disc 3, and pretty much every single thing you can do in the game is open to you at that point before you raid Midgar at the end of Disc 2. Disc 3 is just pretty much an extension of that, and we do not want to go back into Midgar, so... We approached it all the way for the other side, but we came to the same location, RPG Physics. Radio! Then that literally was the only reason for getting the key to Midgar. To get the premium heart from there. Next up, we are going to visit Calm. There isn't really anything at Calm, but we want to visit a friend who will be very important Later on, if I can remember where he is, I believe he is over here. Yes, this man. This man is known as the Calm Traveler. The world's changed a lot in the past few days. That huge monster meteor was covering up the sky and acting like he owned it or something. A lot of my friends have died. I'm going on a journey to pray for their souls. A map that was sunk along with the ship, a guidebook. A rose that blooms once every 1,000 years in the desert, Desert Rose. A harp that soothes those who hear it, Earth Harp. Wonder if there's anyone who will bring it to me. Those are three special items that you get through various means that aren't so various in what they literally are. But, uh, how are we going to get these items? That will come into light during later episodes. For now, we just want to keep that guy in mind. And now we are going to head over to a new place, if I can remember which continent it is on. You, 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 we'll come back for you. Don't worry, bro. Last time, I was in a hurry to, you know, save Midgar from blowing up, but now I've got some time. I've got time. And while we're at it, uh, let us visit another friend. If I can remember where he is located. Right over here. And he doesn't seem to want to exist right now. I... I'm pretty sure we'll find him later on. Because... That's gonna be epic. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but we are now headed to Cosmo Canyon. And it's awesome music. If I can remember where it is. There it is. 
Okay, as a canyon, the closest point of entry is over here, so let us hit up the closest point of entry, and I'll just see you inside. Here we are in a beautiful Cosmo Canyon. Bugganagan seems rather down ever since he returned from that trip. I'm worried something might happen to Bugganhagen now of all times. Really? Well, let's go visit Bugganhagen all the way up there. Yeah, like I really wouldn't bring Nanaki to see his sickly grandfather. And Cloud is telling Barrett, no. This is a moment between Nanaki and his grandfather. Grandfather! Nanaki? You're still... here. I can't leave you like this, Grandfather. It's the duty of my... Seto's son to guard this canyon and her people. Listen, Nanaki, I think you may already know. If you have any mission in life, it is not to defend this valley. Look at the withering mountain grass. Listen to the warble of the newborn chocobos. Look always to the eternal flow of time, which is far greater than the span of human life. It will teach you more than staying here in the valley. What you will see will eventually become part of the life's dream. For my children, and for your children, so please, Nanaki, go with Cloud, and with your eyes, your ears. <sighs> oh no, don't look like that. I'm alright. It's a wide world, and you must go out and see it. You may even find your life's mate. You never know. Grandfather. Oh, yes. Take this along. I think it will look good on you now. Oh. Oh. Wow. That just happened. Nanaki is Buggin' Hagen. Grandpa told me that he's going away again. Away? It seems like he really liked that airship. He told me he couldn't stay still and just zipped out of here. He even gave me a gift. Look! Receive the limited moon. Wait a minute. Aren't you supposed to give gifts after you come back? <laughs> Grandpa sure is strange. <laughs> hmm. So maybe we'll run into him again somewhere. Yeah. Maybe. Thanks, Cloud. Just... <laughs> wow. I don't know if uh, Nanaki is being serious or just coping. Bugenhagen is what keeps our hearts strong. Yes. Don't really know what else to say about that. So let us move on <laughs> to the uh, next thing. I also wanted to show you that the Limited Moon, surprise, surprise, is a... Weapon for Anakin. It is his ultimate weapon, and it just generally has great stats, even better than the Behemoth Horn we found in the Shinra building. I think I'll go ahead and look up what ultimate weapons do once I get through them. So that means we have ultimate weapons for you, 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 you. Ah, but Sid. Sid, who is no longer in our party, 
We will be back when we are on the trail of your ultimate weapon. And it is here, in Sid's very own Rocket Town. Hello, old man. I... my precious rocket. It's gone. Yeah, it, it served an attempt at a greater good, sir. I know. No matter how much you look, the rocket's still gone. I know what you mean. There was a diner near my house, and it was uh, abandoned for the longest time, and I always thought it would be there, but one day it was completely demolished and flat land. It's so weird to see empty sky there now, but, but this is about you. But I just can't stop it. Just call it an old man's folly, if you will. Anything else? Sorry to get you into this. For me, it's a kind of hobby. But out of appreciation, let me give you this. The Venus Gospel. I wish you'd take care of it and use it. The Venus Gospel, if you had been paying attention, is Sid's ultimate weapon. Which has its own effects, which I will eventually look up and let you all in the know about. Okay, there is but one more thing to do, and we get to finally address the issue of this guy right here. Wait, let me just take advantage of the uh, draw distance to give you a better look at him. This right here, this guy is ultimate or ultima weapon. So, let me just pop out a bit here and get some preparations underway. You know what, while I'm at it, I might as well just explain the ultimate weapon to so all the characters. Cloud, we have yet to see your ultimate weapon. Barret's ultimate weapon, the missing score, deals more damage depending on the collective AP of the materia on the weapon. That's why it did such little damage, because I took all the materia off the weapon. So, all of the mastered materia that I didn't have much use for, I just slapped those onto the missing score, and you're gonna see later, it's going to cause some good damage, or at least competitive damage, to what else I've got. Nanaki's weapon, the uh, limited moon, which I will <laughs> remember to equip... Uh, once I'm done with this. Limited Moon gives Lanaki more attack power the more MP he has. So, if you are going to dedicate yourself to having Nanaki do regular attacks, then that's going to be just great, although with my reliance on enemy skills, that could be problematic. Like I said, Tifa's Premium Heart deals more damage every time Tifa misses with one of her limit breaks, and I think that's every individual miss that you get on the slot machines. I'm not sure if there is a cap on that, that's just how it powers up. Yuffie's Conformer! It does not have any special limitations or dependencies. It actually is a weapon that deals the exact same amount of damage when using the Morph command. So if you're going to extensively use Morph, which I am going to do later on in another episode, then Yuffie is going to be your go-to character for morphing with her conformer. See, the conformer, because it allows the enemies to conform to certain shapes, tee Kate Sif's HP shout is misleading, although I'm not sure if there is some sort of uh, translation faux pas or if my version of Final Fantasy VII has something weird with it. But the HP Shout is also referred to as the Marvelous Cheer, and it's the exact same as Nanaki's weapon. More MP, more attack power. Vincent's Death Penalty gains a little more attack power with every enemy that you defeat. And Sid's ultimate weapon, it has the very unique attribute of powering up the more MP you have. How about that? But for right now, we are focusing 
on obtaining Cloud's ultimate weapon. <laughs> From this guy, Ultima Weapon, and the name of Cloud's ultimate weapon, from Ultima Weapon is going to completely surprise you. Alright then. I'M COMING AT YOU, BRO! ROAR! And he even spread out his arms like, YEAH, LET'S DO THIS! And that is a big doggy. Alright, let us get a sense for... Ultima Weapon as he uses the Ultima Beam on us. Let us grab off our big guards and our white winds. We cannot sense Ultima Weapon. Oh, dear. Ooh! Huh. This is... I couldn't steal anything, so that means there is something to steal. And as you can see, Barrett actually did real damage with his mug attack. And I just realized that Barrett actually did regular damage. Hey, hey, hey! So, let us go ahead and keep trying to steal from Ultima Weapon. See what we can extort out of it. We got the circlet from Ultima Weapon. And then Ultima Weapon said, I don't need this, I am going that way. That is Ultima Weapon's shtick there. He takes a certain amount of damage, and then he runs off to fight another day. At which point, he vanishes, literally vanishes off the map, and he is somewhere random in the world, like right over here. Didn't exactly go far, did ya? Oh gosh, what energy! Damn, you think I'm just going to give up? So, it is our job to keep on ramming into Ultima Weapon and goad him into having him fight us again! And he's just going to keep on dodging out with his... Yeah! Come on! And yes, we we can only fight him once he finds once we find a spot to... Once he settles on a spot, then we can fight him. And this is just the most riveting chase you have ever seen in your entire life, isn't it? Urgh, I'm gonna get you, boss man! Ha ha! I believe once we hit him enough times, he runs over to where he's gonna settle down, and then he and as long as we allow him to do that, he is gonna keep on gaining a HP back. So literally, letting him do this is actively going against our cause, so let's just go ahead and ROAR right in his FACE! <laughs> and interestingly enough, we fight him on top of Fort Condor. That's not a condor on top of a reactor, I can tell you that much. So let us... put up our big guards against this big guy. I wonder if we can steal more circlets from him. I hope we don't end up finishing him off right here. No, we don't! So, let us get our White Wind on, and our Steel on! Oh, yes! And he does have something to steal! And he uses Quake 2 against us, which does... that much against our Big Guard. Well done, Big Guard! We got a Reflect Ring from him this time! Let us save that Lemon Break for another time. For instance, the... Next fight. Well done, everybody. Yeah. And where do you think you're going, Ultimate Weapon? Ultima Weapon? Ultim Weapon? Whoop Whoopin? Hi! You're come on! Come on! I'm gonna get you! Ha ha ha! Kerpowing. I'm not sure if it's just a matter of hitting him enough times, or if I actually have to knock him in the appropriate direction of where he is going to go next. No! Do not go back home! Grrr. I am antagonizing you! BAM! That did it. Or did it. Oh, come on, we just fought at Fort Condor, man! Be cool, dude! Be cool. Alright, you asked for this, and I'm gonna give it to you! Cosmo-mo-my! That was a lot of HP damage. 
That seriously was a lot of HP damage. I can't <laughs> tell myself to give White Wind. Barret could be falling over from the next attack if I am unlucky. Let's see how much damage this does. Oh, nines! That is how you take out Ultimate Weapon like a man! And then he uses Quake 2, which shouldn't finish off Barret. I hope not. Nope. Come on, Cloud. Use your white wind to make our ouchies go away. Bam! Look at that good attack power that Barrett has, and which is immediately upstaged by however much a damage Nanaki can muster. Oh, Barrett, what am I gonna do with you? Well, if I had better materia on me, then this would be this would actually pay off more. But I don't have such materia because it's the command materia challenge. So I'm just gonna keep on bonking you. I'm gonna bonk you until you go over to that place over there that we haven't been to in a long time. <laughs> Bang! And I, yes, Ultimate Weapon does have a finite amount of HP that whittles away with every single fight, goes over Medeal, and we are not going to let that happen. Once again, we are fighting on top of the High Wind, which is a pretty nifty place for a fight. He once again opens with his Ultima Beam, and this time, I think I'm just on to his little tricks. And I am just going to keep on healing myself with White Wind while... I cannot reach him. So let me get this straight. Barret can mug people at long distances. L let's just see this again. Bam! Well done, Barret. Yep, I cannot reach from over there. So I'm going to have to employ some of the strategy before I finish off this big boy over here. Since I cannot death blow, I cannot use regular attacks. I am forced to use throwing or enemy skills. So let us. We haven't done this in a long time. Let us tactical nuke with beta. I've always wanted a tactical nuke and an ultimate weapon while on top of an airship. Wait, isn't tactical nuking on an airship kind of a bad idea? Oh no, the Oh wow, that's a big tactical nuke. Which even even do much damage. And why did I have my only ranged attacking character use the White Wind? Because Ultima Weapon is running away again. Goodbye, Ultima Weapon. I shall see you soon. Ha ha. Chasing? Huh. Looks like he actually ran far, far away this time. I have completely lost track of Ultimate Weapon. How do you lose track of something that huge? Seriously, guys. Seriously. Aha! Thought you could get away, could you? I'm gonna bonk you! I'm gonna headbutt you! I'm gonna headbutt you! Yeah, you can tell when he's ready to go fight, when he goes in a straight line and doesn't try to dodge me. Now we are fighting directly over the northern crater, and for some reason, that means that we are able to fight inside of the crater. Because I think this is the background for northern crater fights. And I'm just going to go ahead and Omni-slash this guy to oblivion. Like so. Kabam! How about that? Mr. Resilient, ain't ya? Resilient and cowardly. Good job, Ultima Weapon. Good job.
Okay, have we lost track of him again? Or... Is he actually ready for the final fight? The ultimate fight, if you will. Do ho ho. We're just gonna go straight on at him. Over this way, and I still see no distinct heads in that sand. Aha! Looks like he is ready for the final fight. I am going to do a little bit of preparation work. Alright, for the final fight, I have done a few, made a few adjustments. I have given Barrett double cut, because his ability to attack from a range will be a great asset to us. And I have piled all the enemy skills on Barrett. Now why in the world would I do that? We are going to see soon. Go on, full-fledged pirate. Pilot. Who knows, you could be a pirate too. Because pirates are awesome, and the full-fledged pilot is awesome. Once, a, well, once in for the last time. We're coming at ya, bro! And he is just ready. He's like... You're gonna come at me, bro! My body is ready! So the first thing we need to do is see if we can mug from this dude. And I have completely remembered that Barrett has all the enemy skills, so the job of giving massive heals falls on him. Especially after he uses Ultima Beam. We can still throw boomerangs at him. That's, uh, that's not completely useless, but limit breaks. Limit breaks are a saving grace here. Ba bam Boomerang to your face! Catastrophe! Yaha! That, that's kind of funny. Look at the description of the coin command. What can you say? It's all about money. We don't want to use that. We want to use this. Oh! Oh, what is this? He uses Shadow Flare on Barret! Ultima Weapon always uses Shadow Flare on the on whoever gets the final hit on him. And I am so freaking lucky that that missed, and I still learned it. So we get this huge influx of AP and experience, pretty much as a reward for having put up with all that, and I get Ultima Weapon. And Ultima, Ultima Weapon even gets his own little in-game cutscene for perishing. And then as if... Wow. That is quite the crater. But check this out. This crater has now sort of caved in this cliff here. And now gives us access to... This place over here, this trapezoidal location. And we can't, obviously, can't approach that with our high wind, not even by landing directly on top of it. Erg. But, uh, yeah. That. That was the biggest kaboom I've seen. I bet the people in Cosmo Canyon heard that. But, yeah, well, once we are able to land on the ground. We're just going to be able to walk right on up to this location. And for some reason I turned off the map. Next time on the Let's Play Final Fantasy VII The Command Materia Challenge, we are going to head out to that ancient forest type place and see what kind of goodies lie there. Until then, game out.